What is sanity? Uh, presence, being present and acting right in the present moment. What did you say last Sunday when I asked this just at the end of the meeting, remember? Oh, uh, not being in your thoughts, like not believing that your thoughts are true. Sanity is a clear mind. That's all it is, a clear mind. And what happens is, what I notice that when you have a clear mind, there's nothing to do. There's nothing to think about. There's nothing to do. All this extra stuff you do, make phone calls and go visit, go shopping, go this and talking to yourself, all that ends. And you just simply do what's important, what's in front of you to do. But sanity is a clear mind. And when you, for those who, uh, we've talked about the anger thing, when you go and forgive your mother and your father, God will forgive you. Don't ask for forgiveness because he will be kept and will not forgive. When you, when you go and forgive, you apologize. You are apologizing for resenting your parents. I'm, I'm sorry, mother, for resenting you because you're such a, uh, you were an evil woman growing up. And I realize now you can help yourself because I see I can't help myself. I become like you. And I'm sorry for resenting you. Turning me away from my father, whatever it might be, imposing your will. And when you forgive them by saying, I'm sorry for resenting you, you no longer will play God. You stop. And God will change your heart from hate to love because uh, anger is hatred. Hatred is playing God because you're judging yourself and others. You live it in your imagination, right? But when you forgive, God will forgive you, and he will change your heart from hate to love. And there will not be the spirit of anger, which is of the devil, that made a home in you. And then what's going to happen, you know, I was thinking about this after the women's forum on Thursday night, is that once that heart change, you will enter into the kingdom of heaven, and then the light of God will start working on the mind. He said, oh, Nick, read those scriptures that we use. He said, bring, uh, on the Bible Thumper Thursday, he said, bring all thoughts into captivity. The imagination is wicked. The imagination is evil. And in thoughts, there's no truth. And so when you truly forgive, now you have the light of God to fight the darkness of the imagination. But you, as someone just said, you have to let go to it, let it happen. You can't fight with the darkness. You have to go through the darkness. You have to relax in it. And you have to quietly take it. And it's going to be because the darkness is the nature of the devil. It's the ego that made a home in your imagination and in your emotions. Anyone that's into it, when you forgive your mother by just saying, I'm sorry for resenting you, God will forgive you. No matter how she acted about it, what she said, that's on her. If her feelings are hurt, those are not her feelings anyway. It's evil. And she doesn't want to admit that she's wrong. But God will forgive you, and you'll walk away free. Then you will still, because you didn't recognize that you were not your thoughts, you're still going to try to fight with thoughts. But if you don't give up, eventually you'll let go. You'll be all in, and the light will fight the darkness. You will enter into the kingdom of heaven, but your vices won't. Because all vices, no matter what, they're alcoholic, drugs, no matter homosexuality, lesbian, a prideful man, president, whomever, all vices are of the devil. They're not even yours. They have never been yours. They're not even you. They have never been you. And that's why I'm saying you are not an alcoholic. You have never been an alcoholic. But because they made you say it, you believed it, then to become a part of who you are. But you, are, you just did drink alcohol because you had so many conflict within, you had no peace, and you were trying to find something out here to make you feel better. And the devil told you, you know what, drink some alcohol, you'll feel better. So you drank the alcohol, you felt a little better. And next thing you know, you're addicted to it. But you can never drink enough to get that original feeling back again. And then so you go from that to something else. But in all honesty, it's not you at all. It is the nature of the devil going through those things. The real you, the true you, which you have no clue about, is perfect. The real you, the true you, was created in the image of God, and you are perfect already. It's just that you're under a cloud, and you can't see beyond the cloud, 
and you think that all this garbage and the thoughts and the feelings and all that, you think that's you, and it's not. And so the world tells you, oh, you are HDD. And you're like, yeah, I'm an HDD. And so now you walk around calling yourself an HDD, which is the nature of the devil. You're not an HDD. You're n all of those bad habits and things are up. That's the nature of the devil. It's not you. That's why you can't make yourself overcome. Nobody want to be that way. Most people don't like being that way. And those who want to overcome can't seem to overcome it because you have identified with a false you as though it is you. So stop putting labels on these things. It's the nature of the devil. You are possessed by the spirit of the devil until you realize it's not you and it'll start to disappear. It will die and consciousness will come alive and you will rise and you have life. And, and a sound mind, um, uh, uh, sanity is a clear mind. You will have a clear mind because you will no longer identify with the mind of the devil. All thoughts, all the time, about anything is, just, it, is uh, evil. The good thoughts and the bad ones are evil. It's a setup. They build you up to let you down. They let you down to build you up. Then you want to go jump off a bridge somewhere because it's of the devil. You're possessed. Uh, I was watching this movie. Uh, what's the name of that movie, Hussar? The Chosen. The Chosen, right? And there was a scene in that I saw last night where I guess if Mary was, had demons possessing her, and so I guess she was, she must have been like a slut or something, right, at one point? Yeah. Mary was a slut. Mary Magdalene, not Mary and Jesus' mama, right? <laughs> there are more than one Mary in the world. But she was a slut. And, <laughs> and the guys played her, and she played them. But she didn't want to be that way. But that was all she knew. But she was unhappy, had no peace about it. And one day, Jesus went to town, and he saw her, or she met up with him, and he healed her by causing her to overcome it. And so she became a decent woman because she no longer identified. What was her name when she was a slut? Lilith. Huh? Lilith? I'm sorry? It was always Mary Magdalene. No, but after that, she went back to her original name, which was Mary. And she said, that's not my name, in, that's not my name. I, I forgot what they called her when she was a slut, but it was a slutty name. <laughs> they her name. <laughs> yeah, at the location they called her another name. And, and she, would re, she would answer to that name, but it wasn't her real name, but because she was a slut, she answered. But when she overcame that spirit of the devil, she went back to being Mary, and she wouldn't even let anybody call her anything. She's like, no, I'm Mary. That's not my name anymore. That's not me. Because he brought her out of the darkness of anger, out of her imagination, and she became herself again. And so last night, she, so after that, she followed Jesus around, and, and they were cooking and, and did what ladies should do. And so she, um, so, this demon came, they ran up on another man who had a demon in him. And he told Mary something about, oh, you're the same, or something like that. Or, or somebody, I forgot what he said, but she believed it. And when she believed it, she started thinking on it. And when she thought on it, she left the camp. She left Jesus and went out to be a slut again because she believed in it. And so Jesus like, where well, Mary? I don't know, she gone somewhere. And somebody remembered that the demon had approached her and told her she was the same and that she was no different. And so he sent Simon and some other guy to go get, go get Mary. And so they went and found Mary, and they brought her back to Jesus. Jesus like, Mary, sit down. That's not you. But he said it in a way where she could realize she had believed into it again. And then instantly she was back to herself. She realized it wasn't her. Same thing with every human being on earth. You believe lies. You're not those things. It's awful that you can go to a program called Alcoholic Anonymous or any other meeting, and they literally have you stand up and say, I'm a drug addict. My name is Joe, and I'm a drug addict. Everybody applaud at being a drug addict. When they're really just possessed with the demon spirit in the imagination. It's not you. 
The real you of whom you have no idea about is perfect. The fake you, the false you is imperfect because it's not you. It's the devil in you. Anyone that's shy, anyone that has fear, anyone that worries, anyone that have suicidal thoughts, anyone that's depressed, anyone that grin when they really don't want to grin, anyone that, the people that are trying to help the homeless out there on the street, the homeless are getting worse. They're lining up everywhere, right? Because the people who pretend they're helping them are wicked. And then the homeless people are wicked for accepting that kind of help they can't see. It's blindness you can't see. But when you forgive, you will enter the kingdom. But the vices won't enter, but you will. And now you have the power of God to get rid of all the vices if you give up and let him do it. And if you stay with it, you will give up because you would no longer identify with that. And he would destroy every vice that you ever had. Because the vices are the spirit of the devil. And the battle is a spiritual battle. You can't fight spirit. Only the light of God can defeat the darkness. You have to give up and know that it's not you. Even though it sounds like you, it feels like you because it's in the body. But it's just the feelings that come from the devil. The feelings come with thought. But you are already perfect. You are already that. But the world has a grip on you. And they have taught you everything that's wrong. So you've been living wrong. Because you thought the world was telling you the truth. They have been lying to us. And God said that we have to overcome the world because the world's not going to let you go. And if you overcome them or you even think about it, they're going to attack you. They're going to say, I remember when you used to be a drug addict. But that's not you, but never you. Because they don't want, the devil's working through them too, and the devil doesn't want any soul to get away. So he'll, he'll, he will make you argue with him inside your imagination and he'll bring other demons to you inside of others to make you argue with them. Never argue with the devil. That's why I said about all these stupid protests. They, they have no meaning. It's just devils arguing with devils. There are better ways to get issues resolved if you're in the light. But protests don't work. Not for the good. Because the ones on the side of against abortion think that they are better than the ones who are for abortion. They are judging the abortion people, and the abortion people are judging them, so you have devils fighting. And, and then you have these people, when they make mistakes, they go into the media and apologize, right? Why are you going to apologize to the world? If you offend your brother or sister, go to them and apologize. I was wrong. I'm sorry. And be done with it, right? But the world says, oh, you need to have a press conference. You need to apologize to everybody and tell the basketball players that and everybody. And when you apologize, they still make yourself, oh, now we want more money. And the world never forget because they're judging you. They're of the devil. You don't know you yet. You're up here, but you're living down here in a lower state of consciousness. God said we should have his mind, his mindset. But right now you have the devil's mindset. Anyone that gets angry, period, have the devil's mindset. Because in God, there is no anger. There's no judgment. Nothing but pure love. And the love, you can't feel it. You can't taste it. You can't touch it. You live by it. And you will never be offended by the world around you anymore. There will be never anything that anyone should say to you or do to you to hurt you. Because you have overcome the nature of the devil. And you can see that they can't see, so you're not going to hold it against them. Because they're blind and can't see. It's hard for me to talk about the fat lesbians now from the Black Lives Matter people because I know they can't see. I can disagree with what they're doing. I know they're radical, they're socialists, they've admitted that. But they really cannot see what they're doing. It's stupid to fight over racism. Racism doesn't even exist. It is an illusion from the devil. White supremacy doesn't exist. And the people who accuse you of being a white supremacy or racism, they have hatred in their heart. They're trying to control you. That's why you got to become your own man, your own woman, and let the world go to hell. It's going to hell anyway. <laughs> but you can live on earth in peace amongst the hell and not be affected. You really, as a witness, I'm telling you, 
and I'm black and slow, and I'm telling you the truth, but you got to forgive your parents first, especially your mama, because your mother recreated your, her image. Any man that has anger is a woman. Did you know that? <laughs> what do you think about that? I never thought about that. I'm sorry? I never thought about that. Did you notice that when you get angry, you act just like your mama? Or your girlfriend or something? You, you, you're feeling the same way, acting the same way, trying to win. Yes. That's a woman's nature. And it's not her nature, but it's the nature of the devil that made a home in her. And she can't help it. So you got to forgive your mama. And if she get mad, that's on her. If she cry, that's on her. If she lay down and die, that's on her. It had nothing to do with you. And if she dies, says your mom, your mom is black, right? Yes. Okay. Here's a really nice clue. If she dies, will you apologize for resenting her? Let her die and say, oh, mama did. She did. And there's some insurance paper in the kitchen right next to the knives and the faults. Force. So go and get those papers, turn them in, collect the money, and buy yourself a house. And have a cheap funeral in a little wooden box. <laughs> because at the funeral home, <laughs> at the funeral home, they're going to try to convince you, oh, you need white gloves, you need a bunch of flowers, you need people to carry the casket, you need a beautiful car carrier. They're making money off you. The reason I know that because somebody I know died, and I had to handle the funeral. And when I went in there to the funeral home, they offered me the most expensive thing in there. You need flowers, you need gloves, you need this. I'm like, I don't want all that. Isn't that like a cheaper way here? I just want to bury this person. And they're like, oh, if you have, every time we offer this, they said, if you were a woman, the women accept that. They literally told me that at the funeral home. They said the average woman except all the flowery stuff and the expensive casting and the beautiful stuff. She, and they, they, she, so they said, if you were a woman, you would have said, I'm like, I don't want that. It doesn't even make no sense to spend all your money and the person going into the ground. You know what I mean? All they want to do is get buried, bury them. But putting all jokes aside, which is true though, you got to forgive her so God can forgive you and have no expectation that she got to apologize. I don't have any expectation. God will forgive you, and you will enter into the kingdom of heaven, and then he will give you a clear mind. And a clear mind doesn't happen easily because you have already identified with the mind and the feelings, so you think it's you. It's you. Had you never identified with thoughts and feelings, it would be easy to overcome, just like that. But it, the pain of going through it feels like you're dying, but that's, the devil is dying. And he doesn't want to let go.